Soon these idiots won't have jobs. Soon these idiots won't have jobs. So Americans are beginning to really suffer from tip fatigue and they're beginning to say, hell no, no more. Watch this video to fully understand the implications of tip, tip fatigue and why this is only going to lead to more low skilled workers losing their jobs and ending up on the employment line where they actually belong. Now let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. The call for a gratuity, the expectation of one, the guilt if you don't leave one, feels like a growing part of our daily life, and the numbers support this. According to the payroll processing firm Gusto, 6.5% of American retailers currently accept tips, which is nearly twice the amount recorded in 2019. While tipping has always been commonplace in sit-down restaurants, it's not unusual now to see it at fast casual spots, coffee shops, sporting events, the barber, online. Pew Research surveys shows that the constant bombardment of requests has led many Americans to experience tip fatigue, which can lead to actually reduced gratuities. Tipping has now made its way into the political campaign, not a request for donations, but both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump say there should be no taxes on tips. Michael Lynn joins us now. He's the Michael D. Johnson and Family Professor of Services Marketing at Cornell School of Hotel Administration. Thank you so much for being with us. Let's start with these, um, these campaign proposals to eliminate uh, taxes on tips. How would those actually affect workers? Well, the obvious is that they'll have less taxable income, right? So they'll take home more. But the IRS estimates that roughly half of all tax, uh, all tip income is undeclared anyway. Um, we think there are about 40 billion, 45 billion a year tipped in the United States. Half of that's being declared. So let's say 21 billion, um, 20, uh, 1 billion of income is now tax-free. Um, and that's the benefit to the employee. And how would it affect, do you think, businesses if they, if taxes are no longer going to be, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, if tips are no longer going to be taxed? I think that depends upon the details, and we haven't heard very much about the details. For example, is it just the in personal income tax that's going to be exempted, or are we also going to exempt the employee from the FICA taxes on that tip? income. And if the employees are exempted from FICA taxes, what about the employers, their share? Mm -hmm. Are they going to be exempted? If so, then it'll benefit the employers too. Um, so but, and, and it's, you start to, to have to speculate, right? So if, if this were to pass, presumably more and more employees are going to ask and pressure their employers to add a tip screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it'll be harder and harder for those employers to resist. And, and because consumer backlash, that could hurt them. Politicians rush in where there is a new part of American life. And that seems to me the, the, that this rise in tipping that we all feel is now proved by the fact that politicians want to take advantage of it. Why is tipping now so prevalent in so many of the different places that we go? Well, technology is part of it. It's easier to ask than it's ever been. Uh, COVID conditioned us to start tipping in places that we hadn't previously done. And uh, a really tight labor market has given employees enough power to demand uh, that their employers ask for tips. Explain the COVID part of, of that answer. What happened in COVID that made, uh, that changed both the expectation of tips and also our willingness to give them? Well, A, during COVID, many people had nowhere else to spend their money, so they had plenty of cash. They were at home safe. Service workers were not, and they felt, and they knew that those service workers weren't getting, for example, restaurant uh, waiters weren't getting in-dining uh, customers. And so there was a clear, they had a, a greater need for tips. And I think consumers responded to that perceived greater need and also wanted to reciprocate kind of as a hazard pay uh, for employees working during that time. And as a consequence, they started tipping more for traditionally tipped services and became more and more likely to tip for services that we wouldn't otherwise. 
uh, tipping for quick service increased during COVID. You see, guys, this is the nasty thing that has happened. A lot of these people who worked during the events of 2020, they developed a sense of entitlement and, and came to believe that they were more valuable than they actually are. And it's a level of stupidity. It's a level of absolute stupidity. All right. You're working at a starter job. This is not a real job. This is a starter job. I had someone, one of my subscribers, who basically just said, you know, well, hey, you know, I, I made a video where I talked about the fact that Warren Buffett and his wife went to a billionaire's camp and his wife was really pissed off because, you know, they were selling they were selling one dollar cups of coffee for five dollars, essentially. And she didn't want to pay five dollars for a one dollar cup of coffee. Now, you know, there are people who are like angry. So one of my subscribers got angry and he was like, well, angry, you know, I've sent you a couple of donations. So, you know, these billionaires to go need to get out and spend some money. I said, you know, or should I basically say that, you know, I've sent you a couple of donations. So should I not give you donations, you know, because, you, you know, because it's a waste of money. Now, here's the very interesting thing, guys. I give everything away for free. Everything is away. I give everything away for free. All of my content is for free. Think about that very, very carefully. It's all free. And I am rewarded based on what value you believe that my content provides to you, what you're able to learn, my years and accumulate accumulation of knowledge and wisdom. And of course, and again, you still do not are not forcibly required to give me money. If you decide that you want me to continue making this content and you want to help, sure. And if you notice in 99% of my videos, I typically don't even mention donating. This is a ridiculous thing with some people where they believe that everyone should be given money just for working. Oh, angry, you work. A guy at KFC works. You know, they should, they both deserve tips. How exactly is that? Does that make sense? I don't get paid a salary. I have to earn every dollar that I make. And even then, I don't pressure you for tips. Yet, if you go to KFC and you pay for your meal, they will flip around a screen and say, you know, would you like to tip? You're paying for the food. These are, these are, these are hourly employees. So why the hell are you giving them a tip? Angry, you're just a cheapskate. That's a level of absolute nonsense. You know, some people, a lot of these people, they they, they seem to think they don't they don't like to think about the fact the fact that not everyone's work is equal. Not everyone deserves the same amount of pay, and not everyone deserves a tip. You know, guys, I have a headache. At the time of recording this video, it's been days of this. I have a headache. And I've had headaches every single day for the last week. And a part of it is the amount of sleep that I get. I don't get enough sleep. I struggle with sleeping. And guess what? My business is growing. And I don't have time to just take a vacation like some idiots like to say. Angry, you need to just take, a, take off a couple of weeks. And I take off a week or so. I don't have time. I have work to do. I can't, guys, I have, listen to me. There are many things that you guys ask me for. You're asking me for my courses. The courses are being built. I have to constantly be active working on that course. I have people working for me. You guys are asking me, why aren't you on other platforms? I'm working on it. I have to actively be there working to try to, to get active on other platforms. You guys are constantly asking me for things. Oh, angry. I would like this type of content. Could you try using, you know, using AI in this way in your content? Well, guess what? I have to study some of the techniques that you're asking for. You ask me to do certain things like do this, do this, do this. Well, now I have to learn how to do this, right? Or I have to learn how to do that. Or I have to spend time building this and building that. It's it, guys, I'm telling you, there's so much work out there. This is something that mostly Gen Xers understand, you know, and you basically just have to grind and grind and grind. These are, there's so many hippie people in this freaking world. These hippie people who have these hippie mindsets, 
where they think that you could just take off at any given moment and go chill. That's what the boomers did. We don't have that luxury. We have to hustle. We have to grind. We have to go hard. We have to go hard. Because no one's coming to rescue us. Okay? No one's coming to rescue us. I'm telling you guys. It's it, 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 it pisses me off. It really pisses me off hearing people say things like that. You know, there's one comment, and I love this comment. You know, for example, let's see if we can, like, circle in on this. Because this is, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Let me see if I can get this comment up on the screen for you guys. Right? Where I basically talked about the fact that, Bill, that you know, saving, that, you know, wasting money is a joke. Right? Look at this comment. Billionaires don't become billionaires by spending like they're billionaires. Billionaires don't become billionaires by spending $5 for a $1 cup of coffee. This is such a stupid thing. Absolutely stupid. Okay? Look at this comment. Pedro says, they hire you guys for pennies. Then Waldo says, yes, they do. Have you ever met a billionaire? But I mean, guys, billion guys, Mark, Mark, Mark Cuban, for example, he is known to look for good deals on groceries. These people became billionaires because they learned how to manage money. Learning how to manage money is extremely important. I'm telling you this. I am telling you this right now. A lot of these people, a lot of these people don't know how to manage money. All right? They don't know how to manage money. And because they don't know how to ma manage money, they basically act like everyone should ha give them handouts. Like everyone should give them, you know, give me money, give me money. You know, like something is owed to them. And that's absolute rubbish. That's absolute rubbish. I'm looking for the comment from that guy, and unfortunately, I think he deleted it. I, I, and I thought that I had made, I thought that I had taken a screenshot off it, but it seems like I did not. Seems like I did not. So they, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it sucks. It sucks. It sucks. It sucks. It really does. It really, really does. You know, people run away. This is how people operate. This is how people operate. And I'll tell you right now, I could care less if they ever give me another donation. Because if you want to, if you think that, oh, because that my work is, is, is worth the same as someone who works at a fast food restaurant, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. The amount of value that I create for others, the amount of education I've had to acquire and continue to acquire to do my job, to tell me that I'm the same as a fast food worker? Are you out of your mind? And I and that they deserve to be paid. This is a this is a six figure business. I've had Gen Zers wanting to fight me and 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 scream and holler at me because I sell courses and it's the same as a fast food worker. You've got to be guys. We are heading so fast towards socialism. I'm telling you because and this is how it guys. Socialism, it always destroys countries. It destroys nations. What ends up happening is you have countries that are thriving under democracy. However, there's always a, a, a small group of people. Sometimes it's not even very small. It's large. But there's always a group of people who are not doing as well economically as others. These are low-skilled people. These are people who are just who refuse to invest in themselves. Guys, they, they're, for example, they will not do what others will do. Going to school and getting an education in a lot of countries, they won't do it. These people won't even finish, like, even middle school. They refuse to finish even middle school. Or they drop out in high school and that's it. They refuse. They absolutely refuse. 
They won't go and get a trade. They will not go and learn a trade. They won't go to university and get an actual degree that can get them a job, a higher paying position. They won't do any of these things. They believe that society is, a, is supposed to establish a means where, just, where anyone can acquire a livable wage. So what they do is they petition the state, and then the state begins regulating the prices of everything. And they begin handing out money to people. And they do it through different ways. If they don't just give it to them directly through social programs, they begin regulating wages so that people who with low skills or are no skills, you know, you could buy, be a guy that sells bread at a bakery and you'll make the same amount of money or you'll make a, you'll make, you'll make in the range of range of someone who went to school and, you know, studied to be a, and, stu and studied to be a, uh, you know, x-ray technician so the x-ray technician will make 25 dollars an hour and the guy who sells bread at the bakery will make 25 dollars an hour and they call that equal how the hell is that equal and then they say it's about kindness but eventually the system falls apart because it's no longer sustainable it's no longer sustainable to sell to it's no longer sustainable to pay a guy who has no education and works at a bakery selling bread okay we're not talking about the baker by the way we're talking about the guy who works for the baker selling bread it's no longer sustainable to pay this guy $25 an hour it's no longer sustainable to pay the, the guy working at McDonald's $25 an hour. These social programs, they're no longer sustainable, and the country eventually runs out of other people's money. And also, people that would naturally would go into, you know, more go into fields that require long years, more, you know, long years of education and so forth. They turn around and say, well, why the hell am I going to go and study to be a lawyer or a doctor or a radiologist or, or an engineer if I can just go and get a livable wage being mediocre? So then you end up in a situation where you don't have a – where you have fewer people in these fields that you need and that would generate income and generate wealth for society. And then you have an abundance of low-skilled workers. And then when everything crashes and burns, it's hard to rebuild because the people who would be rebuilding are now gone. And then you also have a socialist government. And it's amazing. It's these and these socialists, these people who create these socialist governments, they become tyrants. This has happened, guys. You could it happened in Venezuela. It have it happened in Jamaica. Jamaica, when they got their independence from the British, Jamaica was a thriving country. And, and then you had the lowest of the lowest in the country say that, what about us, the poor people? And they, they practiced socialism. And within like 10 years, the country was, was damn near bankrupt. Damn near bankrupt. All right? And they never recovered from it. And I ended up with an extremely corrupt government that exists to this day. Extremely corrupt. Tyrants. This is that's the legacy of socialism. You end up you end up with dictators and tyrants. And you can never get them out because it becomes a legacy of these countries. Look at Venezuela. They 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 uh you know Hugo Chavez and now Maduro. And you could never get, it becomes almost impossible to ever get them out. Look at the history of China and the CCP. The, the Communist Party never existed in China. That's something that happened after World War, was it World War II? That's something that happened over the last century. That's something that happened over the last century. And once these people are in there, it is it changes the culture so much you can't get them out. Look at Cuba. You can't get them out. It's it becomes like this forever. It it's short of a revolution, you can't get them out.
Even when the countries become democratic, you still they still maintain power over the so-called democratic governments. Countries like Vietnam, they have like a democratic society, but the people who control the government are still a socialist communist party. You can't get them out. And you have people who will continue to vote them into power because they want easy lives. Guys, you look at the Philippines, and there's so much opportunity in the Philippines. Everyone's like, oh, my gosh, we're poor, and we're, you don't understand how hard things are. Here's the thing. Life has always been hard, okay? Life has always been hard for everyone. I look at someone like the Filipina P, and she's extremely fortunate. This is a woman is making a couple hundred thousand dollars a year now. All right. She's a creator on YouTube. She has a channel where she talks, where she basically, you know, focuses on expats and talks about life in the Philippines. And this is a woman, she talked about her, you know, how she suffered and struggled in life and so forth and dealing with confidence issues. And guys, you're in, here's the thing about being Gen X. I used to think I was special. I used to think that all of my suffering was special, I, that I was a special little, I was, I had, I had like a, I used to think that I had this, this monopoly on suffering. Like, oh my gosh, I suffered so much. And sometimes people like millennials, they hear my story and they're like, oh gosh, bro, you suffered. Your parents were terrible. Like this is abuse. Right. And I'll get it from, I'll get it from boomers. Don't care. Boomers absolutely don't care. Cause they're the ones who did this to me. But I'll hear from millennials, they'll be in absolute shock and say that my parents are monsters. But it doesn't work like that with most Gen Xers. All right? A Gen Xer hears my story, and then they, just, and they tell me something worse. And it's not because they're, they're trying to let me know that what happened to they're not They're trying to invalidate my experience. No, 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 no. They're just letting me know, bro, just remember, you're not special. We were all getting the shit kicked out of us by our parents. We were all thrown out of the house when we were 14 or 15 years old. We were all poor kids growing up. We were all victims of narcissistic abuse. We all got the shit beat out of us, beat out of us in high school and middle school and grade school. It was all of us. You are nothing special with your suffering. We all went through it. That's the thing, guys. Even my rage, you know, I thought it was red pill rage. Nope. I thought, you know, a lot of people thought like, oh, angry, angry has this rage, you know, he's the red pill rage and blah, blah. It's not, has nothing to do with the red, has nothing to do with the manosphere, has nothing to do with women. It's Gen X. It's a silent rage. I had no idea that most Gen Xers are, many Gen Xers are walking around with a rage inside of them. Some of them will say, oh, it's not true. I don't care. But it's bullshit. A lot of Gen Xers walk around with a rage inside of them. And have been walking around with this rage for decades. All right? I'm in my 40s now, but there are some Gen Xers pushing 60. And they've been walking around with this rage their entire lives. And it's a silent rage where you don't realize, you know, these people, they can snap. And every so often they do. You know? So when I hear people telling me that, you know, I'm I'm the same guys, I have I have an undergraduate degree from a top university and two master's degrees. Two masters, all right? And I also I almost had a PhD and a doctorate. All right. I'm telling you guys, just sharing this with you. The amount of work I've done in my life to get to this point. And people would would say that my work is just as valuable that a that a fast food employee, a low wage, no skilled worker, a cashier is just as important. That's a joke. That's a joke. It's saying that a doctor, a doctor and a and a cashier both are both should be receiving a livable wage. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be guys. People are fighting for communism. They are fighting for communism because socialism is just a gateway to communism. Communism is just a gateway to Marxism. And Marxism is just a gateway to totalitarianism. 
and totalitarianism is just a gateway to extinction. That's where all of these things lead. It's a dis it's an absolute disgrace. It's an absolute and utter disgrace. It's something that I find to be quite disgusting and quite sad. A lot of these people aren't going to have jobs soon. A lot of them are not going to have jobs soon. Robots are going to be making those burgers. Robots are going to be cooking those burgers. Burgers at this Los Angeles fast food restaurant are classic, but the workers may be the future. Cali Express touts itself as the world's first fully autonomous restaurant. Okay, you're going to help me get Wally to make me a burger, is that right? From facial recognition as you order. So go ahead and put in your order. Okay. So we'll do the burger with everything and some raw onion, of course. To the robot chefs behind the counter, almost everything here is made by machines. The fries by a robot called Flippy. Flippy is using his robot arm to grab a basket. He's going to bring it over here to this freezer and okay. we'll dispense an order of fries into it. Because a robot arm is just a robot arm. But the secret sauce here is the AI that really powers it. And for the main course, there's the burger bot, grinding the meat fresh, forming patties and grilling to order. As it spins around and as it gets to the end, it'll scoop it up and it'll dump it into this bucket. Major chains are already starting to bite into AI in automation. Wendy's experimenting with AI-powered drive throughs Welcome to Wendy's. What would you like? Salad chain Sweetgreen has salads rotating through automation. Chipotle even has robots building its burrito bowls. What would you say to people that say, listen, this is taking away jobs? Restaurants have a really hard time finding workers, and it costs them a lot to have those workers. So you want to be very thoughtful about where you put those workers, because working the fry station is a pretty undesirable job. It's dangerous. You burn your arm. Automation will likely eliminate some jobs. That may be inevitable. They didn't choose that it's 30 percent. But Brian Justy, who researches labor practices at UCLA, warns an all-robot kitchen may not be on the menu anytime soon. I think there's a kind of significant smoke and mirrors trick happening here where you get claims of full automation. Because even at what they call the world's first fully autonomous restaurant, there's Hinoveva. The robot helps me out a lot, and then I help the robot in turn. She makes these burgers whole, adding toppings and, of course, the bun, something these robots haven't quite mastered yet. All right, let's try this. Not bad. A bite into the future, whether we're ready or not. Right now, the fast food workers, they're fighting for $30. They're fighting for $30 in California right now, okay? They're fighting for thirty dollars, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, they're gonna get it. They're gonna get it. They will get that thirty dollars, okay? Because they're saying that thirty dollars is not enough. They need more money. Daddy needs more money. Mommy needs more money. Guys, as soon as we have another major downturn, that automation, they're working hard, and this this technology is moving rapidly, and they're just saying. Never waste a good crisis. And people today don't like dealing with other people. It's dangerous dealing with other people because people are crazy and they'll accuse you of shit over anything. It's a, it's, a, it's a miserable experience a lot of the time getting in an Uber, getting in a Lyft, and having to deal with people. And if they refine the technology enough, right now we already have, you know, Waymo automated driving taxis, self-driving taxis in, in, a, in various states. And they're gradually expanding. And Tesla is set to unveil their um, their robo taxi services. A lot of robo taxis are coming, and the benefit is they're all brand new cars. They're all Jeeps. They're nice and spacey. You don't have to speak to a person. You don't have to deal with a person, and you don't have to tip them. That's a massive luxury. That's a massive luxury. Sure, is there a situation that hey, you might have a medical emergency and you need a driver? Sure, but the thing is, these cars are equipped with like, I'm, and this is my assumption, they're likely equipped with, equipped with panic buttons. So you can press a panic button and it will pull over immediately so that if you need to step outside of the car, you can step outside of the car. It's, it's just common sense and reason. So when you take that into consideration, 
you know, and once people learn how to use these vehicles, use the technology, um, use it well, there's really, you know, it's beneficial compared to the insane amount of money that we're giving to these people. What's the benefit? Well, the, guys, I've heard some stupid stuff from many of you. Like, oh, because, like, you know, these are these vehicles are going to be used to deliver food. So people will be, you know, going off and people will basically be going and uh, getting their food delivered to them right at, you know, um, deliver, delivered by these vehicles and, and so forth. And I've heard some of you say, okay, well, you know, they're going to be vandalized. Like, good luck. I don't know why, but I have a lot of... I have a lot of door dashers and food delivery guys that watch my videos and it's not like I want them here, you know, cause you know, basically guys, I, you know, I, I study comedy. I love comedy. And even though I can't, I won't go and do stand up because you know how it is like these days, they just destroy you. I'd love to do stand up, but you know, I study comedy. I work very hard on comedic approach. I integrate a lot of comedy into my videos because that's, that's basically what, what draws you in that's what keeps you here it keeps it makes things interesting if i just basically sat there and with a monotone just talking to you like this you'll get pissed off you're like i don't like this this is crap all right so you have to have a comedic delivery you have to have timing and so forth right so and you, you actually you have to provide value to others you have to be able to provide value to others and when it comes to these little jokers, they don't provide value. For some reason, I have I have a lot of these food delivery guys on the channel, and they seem to think that they're entitled to things, and they're like, oh, if these cars, if, if these machines start delivering food, they're going to be vandalized. Who's going to vandalize them? Who's going to vandalize these things? Food delivery drivers themselves. The same people who are, like, who are making these comments are the ones that would be out there vandalizing them because they, these machines are taking their jobs away. Do you see just how low and low value these people are? Think that they're going to tear down society? We're going to tear down society. Oh, if we see a self-driving car, it's going to get vandalized. Who's going to vandalize a self-driving car? The door, you know, yeah, the, the 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 Uber drivers who are losing their jobs, right? Like how stu guys, these people need to be put in jail. They need to be put in prison. These are twisted good for nothing evil individuals. They need to be arrested, they need to be locked up, and they need to be prosecuted by the to the full extent of the law. And there's some of you who are like, it's about kindness. It's about kindness? Yes. So vandalizing things, destroying public property because it took your job away. Some low, you know, and you don't want to go and learn new skills like the rest of us. You know, that it's kindness. Yes. No, it's socialism. You could see exactly how socialism works, and then everyone starves while the while the uh, while the so while the people who the people who started it basically eat and eat well. When everyone was starving during the uh, Venezuelan crisis, when their money, when their society, when their economy collapsed, you have videos of Maduro being served steak, steak. Unbelievable, unbelievable, guys. There are so many people in our society, so many people, guys, so many people that are fighting for hell on earth. They want us all to suffer. They want everything to go down, go to hell. They want our society to crumble. These are evil, twisted, wicked, cruel, vindictive people. These are not good people. I'm telling you guys, I look at it and I just, I just shake my head i shake my head because soon these idiots won't have jobs many of these idiots are going to end up unemployed they're going to end up on the streets they're going to end up living in shelters in their cars you know some even living in the woods they're going to end up on public assistance that's where they're headed and that's really where they belong if you look at a guy like david goggins i read david goggins book i need to read it again Got to read this guy's book again. But it was truly amazing. You know, he grew up in a family with an abusive father. I don't know if his mother's still alive. I think she may have passed away. And his mother really suffered at the hands of his abusive father. His father was very, his father was a stingy, good for nothing scumbag, just like my father was. That's how parents were back in that era. 
and he was an overweight. He was a fi- he was a fat guy. You know, as an adult, he was a fat guy, and he went on to become like I believe a Navy SEAL. And he pushes it. He's he's achieved so much. He's achieved so much. You know, he had to take an exam, and he was and he's like, you know, there he's he didn't know how to do it. He was like, what the hell am I going to do? How am I going to pass this exam? So basically, he had to study harder than everyone else. He had to go harder than everyone else and study harder than everyone else and put in more time and more work because he was not naturally gifted. As a Navy as a Navy SEAL, he had to learn how to swim. But guess what? You know, he didn't know how to swim. So he jumps into the water and he, and he sinks to the very bottom. And the guy there says to him, you know, he goes, yeah, you're fucked. That's what he tells him. He says, you're fucked. And he had to persevere and fight through that and learn how to swim and swim well as a Navy SEAL. Because he, there was no chance he could, he had never learned to swim. And he had to learn to swim as an adult. And guys, basically the story is like a lot of guys are like this. And when they, when they run into guys like that, they basically put them in the kiddie pool. And they basically, and they have to learn. And they have to suffer. And no one gives a damn about your suffering in this world. No one cares about your suffering. I'm telling you. These people are just like the boomers who believe that something is owed to them. The world owes them to something. I saw this idiot who left a comment on one of my videos that, you know, he has autism and, you know, the, the uh, he has autism and the kinds of jobs, you know, those the kinds of jobs that he can handle are typically those fast food jobs. And he's come to understand that he has a right to work and to be paid well for it. You know, get like a livable wage. He has a right to work. Like, get the hell out of here. You're not entitled to anything. You're not entitled to anything, all right? You have people who, who are part of the lowest denominator that are trying to enslave the rest of us and steal from the rest of us and then call it kindness. It is an extreme form of evil. It is evil. It's cruelty. It's wicked. It's disgusting. You heard me right. It is disgusting. And that's what these people are trying to do. People who want, who don't contribute anything and want everything. It pisses me the hell off, y'all. You don't understand how much it pisses me off. Okay? And I'll say it right now. I'll say it once and I'll say it again. Do not tolerate it. We don't have to tolerate it whatsoever. Don't tolerate the BS from these people. Don't take the nonsense from these people. Learn how to say no. I'm not giving you my money. I'm not handing you my value. All right? What I work for belongs to me. And I will fight for it and I will defend it. That's how you have to roll. That's how you have to roll. Because if you don't do that, if you don't if you don't stand up to these people and tell them that I'm not handing it over. I'm not giving you what I've worked so hard to attain. Okay? It belongs to me. It's not about kindness. It's about reality. Okay? If you don't do this, then they will try to take and take and take until there's nothing left. This is basically something out of the Joker movie. We'll just basically be good little boys and girls and and, 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 and and never realize just how hard we're getting screwed by everyone, by these people who go around calling it kindness. Jesus, help us. I'm telling you. Compare. Guys, I, I, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Just because education... Sucks right now. You have people saying that fast food workers are more vo- are more valuable than teachers. Let me tell you something. There are many bad teachers in this world, but can you tell me that every single teacher that you had was bad? Can you tell me that you would that that right now you would know how to read and write if you didn't go to school? Do you think your parents were going to teach you? Do you think most of us, our parents, are not equipped to homeschool? People think that everyone can do homeschooling. They can't. Not every parent is equipped to be a home to do homeschooling. Not everyone is equipped for homeschool. It's a level of stupidity and dishonesty to say that. 
and to say that teachers, just because we have so many bad teachers today, doesn't mean that we should that we throw the baby out with the bathwater. That we completely shut down the education system and everyone just sits around, eats, and gets fat. Guys, you're not people who think that, oh well, if we don't get what we want, we're gonna burn down society. That's Gen Z's thing right now. Yeah, man, if we don't get what we want, we're gonna we're gonna burn it all down. And you've got millennials who got screwed pretty hard who are like, yeah, Gen Z, you show them, you go out there and you give them hell. All right, you do whatever you have to do. The stupidity. That stupidity celebrating anarchy because you don't get what you want, because you've been screwed. You're gonna go for a you're gonna take an anarchist approach. You're just hurting yourself. You're only destroying your own neighborhoods. You're only creating a, 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 a worse society for yourself. Society's not gonna collapse. Groups of people are gonna collapse. The only thing that happens are prices end up going up. Target basically takes its target says, okay, well, it's too expensive to run this store here. So now you don't have a target in your neighborhood anymore. Oh, good. We don't need Target anyway. All right. We don't need them. Guys, many of you don't know what it's like to live in a place where there are no stores. There are no large stores. It's just like a general one mom and pop store. And it's basically hard to get food or anything that you need. Some people understand that. it's There's such a level of stupidity. Stupidity among people. It's It's crazy. All right. You don't know what it's like to suffer. You don't know what it's many of you don't know what it's like to be hungry. You don't know what it's like to eat garbage off the side of the road. I do. Many years ago, I was homeless. Over 10 years ago, I was homeless. I ate garbage off the side of the road. They would just like sometimes uh, people would come by like bakeries and they'd just toss their trash at the side of the road, like for the homeless people. And they would go and grab at it like pigeons. It would eat the we'd eat their uh, their bread, you know, right off the right off the pavement. All right, and they would try in garbage bags. It didn't really matter if people spit in it or what. I'm telling you guys, you don't know the life that I've lived sharing water with people who had like terrible sores all over their face. But I'm so thirsty, of course I'm going to drink the water. Being in situations, being being around people, being out there when there were outbreaks of tuberculosis. Well, there's always outbreaks of things like TB and all of these conditions with homeless people. And worrying that you're going to catch it. When I finally got off home, when I finally got a place to live and stopped being homeless, it took me a long time to recover. My feet were damaged badly, like pieces, like chunks, parts of my foot bottom, my foot. The bottom of my foot had become hardened. And I had to wait and just allow it to fall out. Like it like became like a rock. And the flesh basically it was it died. Yeah, the flesh in my in the bottom of my foot died and it became hard and I had to just let it fall out and 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 heal on its own. Like you guys don't know what poverty is like, what real hardship is like, what real suffering is like. I earned a master's degree while homeless. Like tr- like think about that carefully. I earned a master's while homeless. The day I gave my thesis defense was the day I moved into my new place. And I had to fight for survival. I had to fight for survival ever since. I've never had a job for... Ever since that, ever since I survived homelessness, I've never worked for another person. I've run my business for years. I came back to YouTube about a year. I was sick for four years. Four years, I was bedridden. I lost every friend I had. And as soon as I got better, I had to basically get back to work because I had four years of things to handle, four years of of just four years of a lot of stuff, you know, that I didn't have, that I didn't, that I didn't address. And it was crazy. Within one year, I I built this YouTube channel into a six-figure business. Within one year, I built this channel into a six-figure business just because I understand YouTube so well, just because I've been a content creator for 10 years. Okay? I have multiple streams of income right now. Multiple streams of income, all right? And it's still not enough because I'm grinding hard. I'm grinding hard. I'm building out. I'm rebuilding my brand. And I, you know, and that's that's the power of knowledge and experience. But, guys, to think that, to say, to think that, 
that type of knowledge is equal to some guy who works at McDonald's and has no skills and to, and then be told that you're equal, you've got to be kidding me. No, we're not equal. All right? To be told that an electrician is the same as someone who works at McDonald's and, and, and paying both of them the same amount of money is kindness. Are you stupid? Do you know how much work it takes to become a master electrician or a master plumber? Like, how dumb do you have to be to not even comprehend any of these things and then call it kindness? Where people who are in these starter jobs are supposed to be paid the same as people who have had to invest sometimes years or decades of their lives to, to uh, refine their craft and they're still learning? I tell you guys, it's a disgraceful thing. And a lot of the people who think that they're going to get what they want, they're just going to find eventually that, you know, they're going to run out of other people's money and trying to become anarchists and destroy society. It's not going to work out for them. In the end, they're the ones who are going to they're the ones who are going to hurt the most because the time when they should have been learning to develop themselves, you know, they were basically thinking that that the society would always subsidize their living. But eventually everything goes to hell and they'll be out on the streets and they'll be homeless and they'll be suffering and struggling. And guess what? The people that have been demanding and preaching kindness, they're only pushing more people to say, yeah, go and F you. Oh, you're one of those people, right? I would never do a damn thing for you. That's where we're heading. Guys, if you're enjoying the content, by the way, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the Angry Guy Clubhouse on Substacks. You can dive into our podcast, Gen X Stories, World Politics. You know, I post so much great stuff over there. You also get a free copy of our digital Nomad Blueprint. I've actually changed it up so, you know, you'll get it. It's right at the top of the email right now. When you sign up, it's in the welcome email. And everything's free over there. I publish articles daily on Substacks. So you can go over there, grab, a, grab, a, grab an article, read an article. Uh, different subjects. I have everything on over there, you know, talking about everything from, you know, from society and relationships, just like stuff we have on here on YouTube with the fall of the Roman Empire and how women played a role in that to, you know, discussing, you know, what, how Donald's could have done things a bit differently instead of wiping out half of the universe. He could have just, you know, done things, some, you know, snapped his fingers and put like a soft limit in place so that whenever uh, populations reach the point where, they um where they would end up collapsing due to issues issues with resources or social roles being filled it would limit the number of uh, it basically limit limit their growth to ensure a survival you know there's a, you you get a mixture of things over there and you guys really really enjoy that or me blasting the boomers for what they've done funny funny thing is my most my most observed post is actually cuz i have videos over there is actually uh, my my most um viewed post is actually is actually a, my, a post about blasting the boomers for what they've done. Yeah, guys, there's, there's something for everyone over there. There's something for everyone. It's a less toxic community. You can leave comments. You can interact with me. You can have a good time. You can have a good time. So that's something for you to go and check out. That's something for you to enjoy. But, I mean, I really want to hear your opinions on everything that's happening here, guys. You know, and, and Substacks is linked in the description. The Angry Guy Clubhouse. Is linked in the description. It's basically it's it's basically my web it's my website. What do you guys think regarding all of this? You know, soon these idiots will not have jobs, and many of them will be homeless, and that's where they belong in the streets because because it's from the streets that they came, and it is to the streets that they shall return. But let me know your thoughts on this, and let me know what you guys think in the comments, and we'll talk about it there. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you like the video, share the video, and just remember that all roads lead to MWM and walking away. And cheers.